We have another question from our audience. Could you okay. introduce yourself? Thank you. My name is Don Smith. Um, I would like to address this question to the mayor. I would like to know, um, would you change the way the city school district structured their cabinet, where the superintendent is allowed to bring in as many people and pay as much money as he want without being board approved or mayor approved? No, that you. is a great question. I have heard for probably the last 20 years uh, public criticisms about the school district, and it probably covers six to seven superintendents, about a bloated bureaucracy, uh, about a number of positions. The first thing I would do is want to go into that organization and go in with the best and brightest team that we could find and, and make evaluations that which position should stay and which should not. And I think that what I would do, and while I, I support the superintendent, I would hold them absolutely accountable for decisions that he would make, for what he would, what he needs, how much that that uh, position would pay, and I can tell you right now, I think we can make significant change in the bureaucracy uh, and try again drive those resources down to children. I think the superintendent, in his defense, has very few uh, people his uh, in his cabinet that are outside of one of the four unions in the city, and I think that uh, certainly that presents uh, conflicts and, and a, a tough situation for him. But there would be a clear line of accountability for those positions, uh, and it would be something that would have to certainly uh, be approved by me. But I would I think city council would weigh in as well. Every any new position created had to add value, and one of the things I would want to do is go through every existing position that is not in a classroom, not in a school, and, and try and determine does it add value to children or not, and be able to make that decision based on that criteria. Thank President Evans, um, I'm for, going to give you an opportunity. For, for first off, um, there's not a single person that's in the superintendent cabinet that is a part of a bargaining bargaining unit. They waive, they, they, they leave their bargaining unit once they come into the superintendent's cabinet. Very interesting question that you asked because you know how that superintendent has that authority? State law. Article 4 gives the superintendent to appoint members of the super, superintendent's employees group. So even if the board wanted to do something about that, they, we would have to go to our legislators and they would have to repeal um, that state law as it currently exists. So that's another mandate, which we get a lot of from New York State, um, that gives the superintendent that authority and power. So it's Article 4. Um, you can look it up. It's, it's legislation that was put forth that gives the superintendent that authority to appoint whoever he wants um, without board authority. So it's, it's maintained in statute. So if we can change, if, if we can change that, you, you, you would, uh, the superintendent would not have that authority. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to let Tim Macaluso from City Newspaper ask a final question in this round. I'm going to build a little bit on the prior question, but Mayor Duffy, you've said that if mayor control doesn't work after five years, we would revert to the old system. But by then, you would have made major changes to both the school district and city government. Wouldn't that put the students and the community through two major upheavals for an experiment whose outcome we can't guarantee? I don't think I've said I would revert to the old system, Tim. I think what I would say is that after five years, uh, we would be in the best position to make decisions, did it work or not. And I do think we could make significant change and, and at least have a significant opportunity to create a, a change to see what does work. I, I think there would be a lot of lessons learned. Uh, and I think the, uh, Dr. Vitoretti said this before, there is no silver bullet, there is no quick fix. Uh, but if we could go at this uh, it, with a, a level of collaboration from this entire community, I am convinced uh, we can get on the track. And I think it opens up opportunities for the future. There may be a new hybrid approach in the future, which is the best. You know, and I, I would say this, this is not about politics, this is not about power, this is, is about nothing but kids and changing the city. This is the most significant issue facing Rochester for 30 years. We have not made progress to the level that we should. So it is testing, it is measuring, it is evaluating, and then uh, putting forth in this community the, the data, and I, I think that it will be clear which way we should go, but it also provides us an opportunity to look for things differently. If I could just finish on this, I've said this to Adam Urbanski and others. If we can wipe the slate clean and look at a system and, and create a system that is focused on children and have parents, uh, students, teachers, staff, this community, neighbors involved with that. I believe we can create a much better approach. What we're doing right now does not have the best results, and I think we have an opportunity to change that, but everybody has to, the stakeholders have to be at the table and part of it. And I think if they are, whatever the outcome is in the future, I think this community will support it. And your follow-up for President Evans? What's your response? Yeah, I, no, no, my, my, I mean, if we are going to move to such a, um, 
with, with such a dramatic move, I'll continue to make the point I've been making since the beginning of the show. It is critical that we have maximum citizen participation in this discussion. And if it's something that citizens absolutely overwhelmingly want, that's fine. But, but we have to remember, and I agree with the mayor, yeah, with, with, with Bob, it transcends Malik Evans and, and, and Robert Duffy and the, and the seven members of the school board and the nine members of the city council. We all come and go. I learned very early on. They screw your name on a desk, and they can take it off very easily. So um, it, being that we're going to make such a decision that's going to affect future generations of um, citizens of Rochester, we have to make sure that there is maximum citizen participation. And I don't mean through a poll, and I don't mean through just small forums or one-on-one -on -one conversations, but a robust dialogue that takes place in this community where the citizens have the ultimate, uh, this, make the ultimate choice as to whether or not this is something they want. Thank you. A couple of things I want to start right off here. One of the things we keep hearing is, are there savings? Do you see financial savings, more money available to spend on things uh, inside schools when you look at schools that have gone under mayoral control? It's mixed. Um, there's been, I mean, the, the, the best studies I've seen have, have said there, there are no savings, but the money has been used differently, so there's more of an investment in programs that are very instruction oriented. But if you look at New York City, spending went up under mayoral control over 40%. Some of that was a result of the school finance uh, suit that forced the state to spend more money, but actually the local spending increased even more. Um, some people would say, and they would also say this is a good thing, that mayoral control provides the mayor with an incentive to spend more in schools. Now, depending on where you sit, that may or may not be bad. Um, you know, more money on schools, particularly if it's money that's being spent well, is good for education. Um, it, you know, some people would, so it's not just a money saving that is necessarily a goal, it's how the money is spent and how well it's spent. Okay. One of the other things and President Evans kept mentioning is that if we're going to do a jolt to the system, it doesn't have to be mayoral control. It could be taking that suburban model and putting it in the urban environment. And I know you've studied so many systems. What about that idea? Here's the problem with the suburban model and adapting it to urban schools. One of the things that makes the suburban model work is you have high voter turnout in sc local school board elections that are only for school boards. But one of the things that drives the, those turnouts is the fact that the school board decides on the school budget. They, they issue bonds, they borrow, they spend, they raise taxes. So one of the things that brings people out to those elections which take place in May instead of November usually in, in New York State is that people's pocket, they're voting their pocketbooks and whether or not they think that it's a good idea or not a good idea to spend more on schools. It's very hard to, unless you're gonna have a, a whole re, reformulation of the, uh, of the way school, the, the school district is set up and make it a deep, an independent school district, which is hard to do in New York State for big cities. Um, I don't see that as, as, a, as a viable alternative in New York, given the politics of the state and the politics of the legislature, I don't see it happening. Do you um, want to respond to that, President no, Evans? I'm just wondering, um, uh, I'm just wondering, uh, so, so I'm just, if you can clarify for me, Dr. Vivaretti, so are, are you saying that um, because it's an urban environment, uh, they, they shouldn't have the same they would not be able to exercise the same thing, the no, same I, things that they do in the suburbs. If yeah. if there was a joke to the system and, and 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 it was changed in a way in which school boards were were um, independent. I mean, I, 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 what I'm that saying is me. that right now the school districts, the school boards of the, or the school districts of the, of the larger cities are not. So the question is, what's the feasibility of making that change through the legislature? And I'm not persuaded that that would be. Any, I think it would be harder to do that than even right. <laughs> move well, to mayoral control. Well, I, I agree. Um, and so, it's it's a hypothetical question. Um, as far as separating out the school board elections from mayoral elections or citywide elections, the experience in New York when they did that was that you had very low turnout in school board elections. It, it was around five percent in many cases. 
And one of the arguments for mayoral control became, got to be, well, at least you know that 50 plus percent of the people are going to vote for mayor. So there's a democratic argument for it, actually. There's a democratic argument for mayoral control in the sense that the mayor in cities where they have separate elections is very often elected by a larger percentage of the population, um, if you follow the experience in New York. Um, here, it's very hard to uncouple that because you, you have your school board elections and your municipal elections at the same time. So um, what I'm saying, if you separated them, I'm not sure. It would be interesting to see what happens. Well, well, Buffalo, it, it, Buffalo and Syracuse both have um, their elections in, 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 uh, in May. Buffalo's elections, they have some school board elections right. coming up this coming May, and they're larger than the, than the city of Rochester. So it's done in Buffalo. Rochester is probably one of the few cities that have this, um, this, this odd model. Um, and I'm, I'm a member of the National School Boards Association. They're, they find it very strange that our school board elections um, coincide with other political elections. And, and also in Buffalo, they are they are nonpartisan elections. So this is Rochester is is unique. In well, nonpartisanship is a, is, a, right. is a very separate issue, right. and that is odd. Right. <laughs> I'd and like if to you, see oh, go ahead, well, Mayor. I would, I would love to see a nonpartisan election. I think that uh, I've heard that mentioned by, by some people, and, and I think uh, Mayor Bloomberg says it best, and he said there's three priorities for elected officials. Number one is to be reelected. Number two is to keep their party in power. And number three, <laughs> say, we haven't figured that one out yet. Uh, <laughs> and so what, what happens is the pressures, and I know that there's immense pressures, uh, I think for a change like this, and it is, it be, I call it political suicide because you, the enormous power of the teachers union in New York State and here, I certainly understand. Uh, they, in many ways, they have been a de facto leader of the school system for the last three decades. Uh, but people like Dave Gant and Joe Morelli have shown incredible courage because at the state level, as we saw, the race to the top uh, funds we did not end up uh, making the grade for, uh, for not making certain decisions. Uh, but we're seeing elected officials who are, are showing great courage at the state level for standing up. We have to change the system. That is one of them. And I don't expect the, the Malik to answer, but I know the pressures that are applied to school board members past and present. Uh, if if certain tough decisions are made that may be in the best interest for children, for families, or the city, uh, then my sense is their chances for re-election get diminished greatly. And, and sometimes, as you see in politics, people will sell their souls to stay in office and lose sight of why they're there in the first place, to serve who put them in, serve families, serve kids. And I think this there has been a, a number of, of issues here. It's very controversial. And I, you know, I, I say uh, there's many members of the school board who I like, Malik, one of them. I, I, I certainly understand we're going to differ on this issue. You, but it is more out of frustration. This city is at a tipping point, and we have to look for doing something different. And to, I can't think of any discipline anywhere where we would go through what we have seen for three decades and not at least experiment with something for our children. Oh, the excuses I've heard have, have rung empty. I okay. want to make sure we hear some more from Dr. Vitteridi, but very quickly I want to yeah. let you respond oh, to that. Oh, um, absolutely. I, I would love for anyone to... Uh, um, to, 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 to tell me or, uh, or ask any, any uh, union representative or anyone else um, about Malik Evans. I think uh, I'm pretty independent. Uh, I, I know there are other independent members on the school board, and I, I'm not easily swayed by anyone. And if it doesn't make sense for kids, I'm not going along with it. And um, I, I think people know that about me. Uh, and I would challenge anyone to produce any evidence of me uh, being unduly influenced by uh, any bargaining unit or any other person out there. Uh, I, I, I think my independence is known in this community, and I'm going to continue to show it. Let's talk about the experience of other cities in, in terms of what happens when mayoral control is implemented and the teachers union, the negotiations for contracts. Is there much of a difference? Well, in New York City there was. I think the mayor, Bloomberg, and Joel Klein took a very hard line with the teachers' union. Um, some people would say they, they took too hard a line. Political suicide? Uh, no, <laughs> not, not for because it was political suicide, but um, did not work as well with the union as they might have. Um, but certainly, it, was, it, it certainly reordered the power structure of decision making in education so that the union wasn't the force it was prior to mayoral control. Now, if you look at what happened in Boston, it's a very different story. Um, Boston is a system where the mayor chooses a school board after he, from a, from a panel, of, from a group of uh, people who are nominated, and then um, the school board picks the superintendent. 
So it's not as strong a system of mayoral control as you would see in Washington or New York or even Chicago. But Boston has probably been the most successful system we've had under mayoral control. And there are a lot of things that feed into that. Um, first of all, the state of Massachusetts is one of the most successful states. If you look at the national scores, they continue to do better than most states. Part of the reason for that is they have a, a very strong state curriculum that's aligned with an assessment system that has respectability. But if you looked at what happened in Boston City proper, um, there was a very close relationship between the mayor and the superintendent. They really, there was a uh, strong coalition there. But that, that coalition expanded to the teachers union, to the school board, to the business community. So there was a real s consensus in the city about what needed to be done. And Tom Pizant was, was superintendent, I think, for about eight years. Um, and lots of people, uh, the chapter in our book on Boston, I think, is very revealing on that. Um, it gave the system a lot of stability, because Boston mm -hmm. was a system that had a lot of instability around racial, uh, right, racial animosity that, that grew out of desegregation battles. They had been in, through two different kinds of elected school boards. They had a uh, a unified school board that was elected at large, and then they had district school board. The unified school board le led to a lot of dissatisfaction in a minority community because there were not enough minority re representation on the school board. And then when they voted by district, there was a lot of animosity on the school board between mm -hmm. black representatives and white representatives. And they went to, um, they went to mayoral control very slowly. There was a couple of referendums on it, and there was, um, it was a close call. But over the years, they, it built up a lot of support because it was, it was seen as working. But so many things went into that. And I guess mm -hmm. the most important thing that went into it, in, in, in addition to this dynamic of cooperation between all the key parties. Which is really managerial the, style well, of the it's, mayor. It's ma managerial, and it, invol it involved all the key players. And the business community is very vocal and very uh, active in Boston. And, but the, the thing that I think really <laughs> delivered the goods was the fact that they made some very good educational decisions. Um, they aligned assessment with uh, a, a very good curriculum. There were after school programs. There were interventions that were used that were based on models that worked in other places. They made very smart educational decisions. And the bottom line is that's what's most important of anything else. Mm -hmm. So how much does the success of mayoral control depend on the management style of the mayor who has it? I think it depends on the management style of the mayor and all the other players combined. The mayor under mayoral control is the most important player, but it's not the only player. And in order for it to work, there needs to be, a, there needs to be some kind of a consensus around the top among people mm -hmm. that so, so what happens if you have the this system, system and a new mayor comes along? Has that, have, you, have you seen that? You know, the part of the problem in evaluating this is we haven't seen a whole lot of that. We, we have a fairly new mayor in Boston now. Uh, not, not a new mayor, a new superintendent. But a lot of the, the issue of studying mayoral control is you've had systems where the mayor, it's been the same mayor all the time. I mean, there hasn't been a lot of turnover. You know, we've had um, Daly in Chicago, Bloomberg in New York, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Menino in, in, in Boston. They've been there since they started mayoral control. So you haven't, we, okay. we haven't been able to ask that question. But it's, a good, it's an important question. Okay, finally I want to get to, and, and I want to give you each an opportunity to, to speak again in this segment as well. But we talk about getting parents involved, and, and President Evans, I know there, there have been many efforts under the current superintendent, other superintendents. You're proposing a parent university. Does mayoral control have any real impact on getting parents in a district that's chronically has problems getting parents engaged, feeling welcome inside the schools? Will mayoral control have a difference on that, make a difference yeah, on that? It depends on what you choose to do as the mayor and, and what the system calls for. Um, even in Boston, there's still some people who would say, if you read, read the chapter in the book from P two guys, Bob Schwartz, um, uh, who had been involved with the mayor's office for a long time, and uh, his co-author who's been in, uh, watching mayoral control from the beginning, there's still a lot, of, there is still some satisfaction out in communities saying that, you know, too much of a consensus is no good. 
that all you guys on the top agree, but what about us folks? Um, and so there, there is some kind of pushback, in, even in Boston. But the bottom line is Boston seems to be working. Um, it seems to be working because of all the things I mentioned before, because of this cooperation and because they're making good education decisions. Um, in New York, there was, um, there was not a lot of effort to involve stu students and parents. And so when we had our commission set up, we did public hearings around the city and we met with people for a year. And we met with all the major stakeholders from Joel Klein and Dennis Walcott to Randy Weingarten, the head of the union, to people on the Board of Regents, to former superintendents, or chancellors in New York they're called, uh, to community people and, and the school board level. And there was a lot of, um, we got a lot of negative feedback from people in communities mm -hmm. who felt like their voice was not being heard. And that being said, you don't need to do it that way. You, you right, don't so need to really play out mail or control in such a way. Okay, we've got a couple of minutes left for the discussion segment. I'll, I'll go to you, Mayor Duffy, and then let you have the final word. In a summary? Uh, whatever you'd I'll, like I'll, to well, say, or ask Dr. Vitteriti. Well, uh, I think uh, Dr. Vitteriti just had a, a great point about it, it depends on the decisions, it depends on the system. And, and I believe that to point to cities and say it doesn't work here, it doesn't work there, uh, I think the cities that have transformed it into this governance style is because things didn't work before. And, uh, Doctor, I would ask you, uh, uh, are there cities where you think there is a much better collaboration between uh, labor and management and parents? Uh, because I, I think it has to be a team effort. Teachers are critical to the success, and so are parents. Uh, and, and either one could be left behind uh, in terms of, of this system. So is there any cities that you have seen where there really has been a kind of I collaboration? I think Boston's the best example of that. And there are other examples that are the opposite. You know, the, Washington, D.C. is another place that's going head to head between the union and the superintendent. Um, but again, a lot depends on, a lot depends on management style. It even goes beyond, I think, uh, the, the formal governance arrangement. It's the management style of the mayor and how the mayor dis play, chooses to play that out. Um, and it's interesting, in, I had worked in Boston for a while for Bud Spillane when he was superintendent there. Boston doesn't have, relative to New York City, Boston doesn't have a strong union, politically. Um, uh, and yet, that operation worked very well there. And in New York, you had a clash of titans, I guess. We had a very strong union, and we had a very willful mayor. And um, that being said, I, th I think all in all, um, while I, I don't think they're doing as well as they claim in terms of the test scores, I think we're doing better in New York because of mayoral okay. control. And, and President Evans. I just wanted to make a point that I hear often, um, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, kind of fashionable to beat up on parents in, in, in the city of Rochester. The vast majority of our parents are doing the best they can. 90, I would say more than 95% of them um, have the ultimate parental involvement. They work, they put clothes on their kids' back, and food on the table. Um, I think the challenge for all school districts is to create demand parents. It's what we're trying to do. The suburbs have demand parents, parents that push up against the system. I think that that is what um, we need to continue to work to try to do in Rochester. We should have parents questioning not just school board members, but their principals in their schools because that, that's another joke to the system that I believe um, will force us to improve because if you have a parent in um, your face every day, you're going to pay attention to what they're saying. Okay, thank you. We're going to start our third round, third and final round of questioning. In this one, we're going to focus on the students. Does mayoral control really work? And we'll start our questioning again, again with Bob. Thank you very much. And uh, I guess more than anything else, we have to determine what constitutes success. How do we know that we have properly served the children? Would you say the barometer should be graduation rates, on-time graduation rates, performance on test scores, college acceptance and entrance, employment? What should be the criteria? And how would you judge, based on those criteria, whether mayoral control or any other governance system, is a success. Mayor Duffy, I'll begin with you on that. Well, Bob, I'd say uh, all of the above. I think graduation rates are key. It's one indicator. Test scores certainly are important to get to graduation rates, but it is a success of children when they leave school, when they go on to post-secondary education or the workplace, which are is critically important. 
Are kids prepared to go out and compete? My issue before with uh, Monroe Community College, 346 uh, city school students go to MCC in 2006, 9% actually graduate uh, two plus years later. So are we preparing children to uh, either be academically strong to go out in the workplace and compete or through vocational training to go out and, and be able to uh, support themselves, their families? Uh, and I think that has to be the key. Uh, when you have uh, one, I think it's uh, for middle school kids they miss one uh, one day every two weeks uh, going back to Malik's question the graduate or the attendance rates four to six thousand kids that, that came right from the top of the school district uh, and it's about 20 percent uh, that don't come so we have to make sure kids are in school make sure the issues that they face and there may be a variety of those are helped addressed uh, or have resources applied to them prepare those kids for the future because just graduating from school in today's economic uh, climate and, to, and with, with our economy our worldwide economy is not enough I mean we're talking talking about kids who have to share books uh, when the world is on the web. I mean, things are, are so much more advanced technologically, so it's preparing children for the future and their success. And just one last point, how do you get better parent parental involvement? I think working with the parents currently, but I do believe a parent that did not graduate from school uh, may be uh, facing far greater challenges preparing to read and be with their children, do some of the things. So as graduation rates and successes go up in the schools, I think we create a better environment for parents in the future. President Evans, are you satisfied that graduation rates are a good barometer of how well graduation the current rates, system is working? Graduation rates are part of the barometer, but you can have, uh, uh, I went to a prestigious university um, and I can tell you that I'm sure there are some professor, professors there that I can tell you that probably students that graduated and still did not come uh, come prepared. So graduation rates are part of it, but you have to make sure that you are graduating graduates that can read, um, think critically, question, um, understand, a, have a sense of history and are able to compete just not with someone in Massachusetts, but with someone in India or China or Japan. Because the United States as a whole, um, even when you control for socioeconomic status, still lags behind the rest of the world when it, when it comes to math and science. So it's just not the graduation rate. It's what they are gradu what skills they are graduating with. And, and that's just, uh, that's, that's a discussion that goes even beyond mayoral control and into um, curriculum and the structure of our school systems. I think that we need to be more in innovative um, in all of our schools um, in terms of making sure that our students are, are going to be able to um, compete. However, I, I think that the data is clear in terms of independent research um, that, that um, Dr. Uh, Vitaretti mentioned. The, um, the, the NAEP just um, released their latest uh, scores, and, and, and I'll tell you that mayoral control um, or, or, or a school board, uh, neither one uh, ensures that, um, that 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 you're going to have blockbuster success in terms of st in terms of student achievement. So I, th I think it, I think it's a mistake for us to think that because we switch a governance system, that um, automatically we're going to see um, strong academic achievement. The data just does not bear that out, and I'm waiting for someone to give me a, a piece of data that does show that. I, I would welcome it. Your turn, Tim Magluso. President Evans, why, uh, in your opinion? Both Buffalo and Rochester have high poverty rates. We've already covered that a little bit. But why do you think that Buffalo's test scores, graduation rates, and dropout rates have been better than Rochester's? Um, Buffalo has been laying the groundwork. They have a great superintendent there, Dr. Williams, and, 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 and it takes time. I think that we have seen year over year, and the superintendent can attest to this, year over year increases um, d during his tenure. The groundwork has been laid, and, and, I, and I will wager with anyone in this room Let's say that we got mayoral control. I guarantee you that you would see um, you, you would see the scores grow, uh, st go up and continue to tick up. Why? Because the groundwork has been laid um, over the last two to three years in this district. Rochester, Can you be specific about what you mean by groundwork? Um, in the strategic plan, in, in, in the superintendent's reentry plan, that the board uh, entry plan that that um, he enjoyed, the Rochester curriculum, which is standardi standardizing the, the curriculum for students um, in the district, um, um, the, the suspension program, we've cut suspensions more than half um, over the, over over a two-year period, period, student arrest, which are down. So the groundwork has been laid for success to come, and we're seeing that success in ELA and math scores with students meeting standards right now. Right now they're meeting standards. So if we had mayoral control next year or the year after, guess what? Um, the, the mayor should be very happy because he'll be able to take credit for um, this success that he will see. 
This year, you will see the graduation rate improve. Northeast and Northwest Preparatory Academy, their graduation rate this year, we're tracking it, we're keeping our fingers crossed, is going to be, in, be close, in, close above 80% this year. So the groundwork has been laid for the success, and we're seeing it come. Um, and, and it's coming. So um, I, I think that what happened before in the district, and I haven't been on the board forever, I, I believe that eight is enough. That's always my, my saying. Um, I, I think that in past school boards have not focused on um, graduation rates. They just have not, and, and, or did not focus on um, student achievement in the way that they should, and that's why the system has not moved, moved the way that it is. I think we're moving in the right direction currently, and I, and I think we'll continue to see those gains as long as we stay true, focus on a strategic plan, and continue to be held accountable um, by, by the community to make sure that we implement what we say we're going to do. And right now, we're doing that. Mayor, what is your response? Well, uh, the question and the answer, I think, were the ones that we saw uh, at a forum last week. Uh, we had one commissioner and the RTA president say the reason Rochester is not succeeding is because of the poverty, because we are number 11th in the nation. The point I made at the end was Buffalo is sixth. Buffalo, I think, receives 45 to $50 million less from its city, but they are double digits ahead in graduation rates. So uh, Malik may have a better sense of their system, but obviously their system is producing better results facing the same or worse challenges in Rochester, So, which points to what are we doing differently. In terms of graduation rates, uh, we, we saw them from 39% up to 52, back to 46. Any way you look at it, it's one of every two children. But uh, you're also graduate. making a point here that Buffalo is improving and it doesn't have mayoral control. Well, Buffalo is improving uh, in terms of, of its results, but you know what? Rochester isn't. Uh, and I think when you look at, the, and I'll grant Malik, while in some areas we have uh, some improvements, what where we don't see, look at the eighth grade scores. And I think it, in some schools, over 80% of the students in eighth grade uh, are not even up the standard. And, and eighth grade is the linchpin for high school. And so I, I think we, we look at what we are missing. We are missing plenty here. And, and I'm going to go back uh, to what we said uh, throughout many times tonight. Is there a silver bullet out there? No, there is not. But we have three decades. And what we have that Buffalo doesn't have, I believe, are histories of reforms, studies, community-wide studies. We can name them all from community leaders, all the things that we have done over the years. What we don't have, we have plenty of plans. I always hear the, somebody say, we want to see the, the plans. We have plans. We have studies. We have movements. But we don't have results. And to me, it is just inconceivable to think that Rochester cannot do better than at 46 to 50 percent. I don't care what. And we, we have to go in the right direction. And I think Malik, I'm gonna grant, he uh, is an example of successes. We have plenty of successes in a school district. We do. Okay, but the kids that we do here. not graduate are the ones that I think are impacting the city. Thank you. Liz? Mayor Duffy, I've received several emails from listeners to WDCAX's Wake Up Club talking about mayoral control and wondering what is going to change in terms of the environment within schools. And nearly all of the respondents to the CGR poll say that it's very important to make schools safer. How would mayoral control have greater influence on the learning environment than the current system right now? Well, I think part of the issues, and, and safety is one uh, thing that came out number one in, in that community-wide poll. When you have two separate organizations, two separate governments. Uh, I, you're never going to be effective. And I go back to when I was with the police department, uh, we wrote the grant for school resource officers. The schools at that time were resistant. Uh, today you couldn't take SROs out of those schools. We have to combine police, sentries, security, to take every conceivable resource that we have in school and out of school and not have two separate organizations working uh, allegedly side by side but not coordinating having a very unified structure of management, responsibility, and focus to make sure those schools are safe. We've seen certainly a number of, of eruptions this year. The fights downtown are all kids who are truant. Uh, we picked up, I think, almost 400 truants downtown in the last two and a half to three weeks. Uh, so the, it's, it's safety, it's truancy, it's the systems that we have. And I would have to express my frustration. Uh, we tried, and I can go on with this question, for four plus years, to look at changes from, from meetings and councils we've had together. We offered to go after truants uh, four plus years ago, but because of FERP and other rules, we could not get information. There has, there has not been the collaboration between these two governments that could happen. And I think it, we're, we're operating independently. 
I think the schools want safety. I, I don't question that with the superintendent and the school board. They want the same things we want, but we just do not. We have never connected, in, in my memory, the way we should. So it is collaboration, focus, bringing all the resources together, including parents, uh, getting parents to volunteer, you know, parents and, and PACTAC. We, we have to routes to and from school, in the school, outside of school, and I, I applaud the police department. I think they've done some exceptional work, but we still operate so independently. If we bring it under one umbrella, I think we could, we could be so much more effective. President Evans, your response? I, I, mean, I would just say I don't think you need mayoral control to um, work together in, term, in terms of the, the police department and the school district. We should be doing that right now. We should be doing that anyway right now. We don't need mayoral control to make that happen. Um, I, I think that sometimes what happens is, is the leaders at the top, the mayor or myself or the superintendent, may say that, hey, we want this to happen. We sit in the meeting and then we leave the meeting. And then the bureaucracies, um, you know, they, 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 they are sometimes resistant to change. I remember a meeting two, two or three years ago um, when we talked talked about um, when the curfew was around, combining the curfew with the school district and, um, and, and truants to make sure that we had a system where we could track the kids to see when they were out at night how many days of school they, they, they missed. I mean, these conversations have taken place. I think that what happens sometimes in, in, in these systems is that um, uh, the leadership may be in favor of it, but sometimes the, 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 the bureaucracy um, sometimes stop that. But I think that we can um, stop that now. You have a good superintendent. You have a mayor that's committed to it. I'm committed to it. I think members of the school board are committed to it. There's no reason why we need mural control. We can do this now. We can make this happen now. Thank you. We have another member of our audience. Just introduce yourself and ask your question. Colleen Thomas. Um, my question is, uh, the questionnaires that you sent out, was it a good success as far as people agreeing with you taking over control of the board, well, the city school district there? I'm sorry. The forms that you send out that we had to fill out for mayor of control. Oh, you're talking the the survey. The oh, survey that, 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 that was a survey organization and CGR. Okay. We, we, we know not, whether we it was a good turnout or or not that people agreed. Oh, the, um, well, the, the results that came back this week, uh, I think it was three to one in, in support of a change uh, for mayoral control, and like seventy some percent that uh, just were fed up and wanted change. And I think we, somebody might be in the audience uh, that could, would have a copy of that to yeah, show well, you. Well, Mayor, Mayor just be, you, you know what the results are. So how about you tell us what you think of the poll results? Well, uh, I'm sure everybody attacks the results in terms of they don't like the, the findings or not. Uh, when the RT had their poll, I think I never said a word about the results uh, on that one. This was a poll that was not conducted just by CGR, but by an independent uh, polling company. And they, they used a methodology of mailing uh, the questions out. It had about a 26% return rate, but uh, the over, uh, I think it was 60-some percent in favor uh, of mayoral control, 23% against, some undecided. Uh, it talked about safety, neighborhood schools, uh, talked about all the things that we've talked about, truancy. And, uh, it, I think the 77% or close to it said they were so fed up they wanted change. We have to change the system. And ma'am, in all honesty, that reflects what I hear uh, when I talk to people every day. I talk to citizens and taxpayers, parents of, of school kids, kids. Uh, I talk to teachers. I talk to staff members. And, and you know, in my unofficial poll, that, that, is, that just reinforced what I have heard. Um, who doesn't want it? I think primarily uh, the teachers union doesn't want it. Certainly the board would disagree. And I understand that. I think that's a, a philosophical discussion on that. But overwhelmingly, I think that the issue is how can we continue to defend decades of not having the progress that this community and our children deserve? And, and just to show you, what, the pollster who gave the, the results, he, he made a very powerful statement when he gave those, re, those results. He had a picture of two children from number eight school that he had mentored. He had mentored and, and tutored uh, children. And he said what got him uh, focused on this issue was these two children, he said, given today's statistics, one would not graduate, one would not succeed. And that was the most powerful thing of everything anything he said aside from the data that is so true and i think that that is why i am so passionate about this because we cannot keep going down that same road expecting different results uh and again uh, there's i think there's been great efforts 
studies, but that the, the issue of change, I, I believe, is so important, and that poll reinforced it. Okay, your time is up. Could you also respond yeah, to the real, CGR? Yeah, real quick, if you have two people, um, and, and they may be in a classroom in the city school district, one may graduate in four years, one may graduate in five or six years. We shouldn't diminish graduates that graduate in five or six years. There's nothing wrong with that. We're keeping them in the system. They're just taking more time to graduate. Um, the, the, the poll results were interesting. There was a poll before um, that, that, that was done by supporters of mayoral control. This, uh, this poll was done by, as far as I'm concerned, supporters of mayoral control. The other one was done by those that were against mayoral control. My point has been all along in this conversation, poll after poll, I don't need a poll. The ultimate, the ultimate poll should be voters deciding whether or not they want mayoral control. There were some problems that I, that I have with this with polling. Philosophically, I just do not believe in mail order polls. Even when the census does uh, send things in the mail, if people don't respond, they come knock on your door. This poll was not conducted by telephone. African Americans were severely underreported. Latinos were not represented at all. And less than 1% of the population of Rochester uh, would have um, responded to this poll, and over 73 percent of the respondents were um, over, uh, did, did not have children in the Rochester City School District, which is not uh, children under 18, which is not reflective of the overall district and, and, and our overall city. So I had some questions about that, um, not not to discount um, any of the polls. I, I think you can the polling should not be the ultimate, um, I, I believe, barometer or, um, as George Bush would say, the decider. Um, I, I think that um, the citizens should make the ultimate decision as to whether or not they want mayoral control, not polls. Okay, we obviously do not have anyone from CGR here to explain, so you can take that at, at the value of what you've heard here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Turning back to you, Dr. Vitoriti, for our final round of discussion here. How much do other cities rely on public opinion polls to help make this decision? Very little. I mean, uh, there was some polling in New York last two years ago, um, and what it showed was, but it wasn't decisive, it was just informative, and what it showed was that most people thought mayoral control should continue, but with checks on the mayor. Um, and I think that part, the second part of it, I, I think, was a response to the style of the administration. It was less a response to the structure itself. Mm -hmm. um, so, so polls can be informative if they're valid polls, I, and I can't judge, I, I wouldn't try to judge whether this was a valid yeah, poll. Yeah, and I don't think that's fair of us in yeah. this venue without the pollster here either, so. Um, but, you know, they can be informative, but, you know, the, the bottom line is in New York, these decisions are gonna be made by the legislature, um, whether you like it or not. <laughs> okay. Uh, or, or the decision not to do anything is gonna be made by the legislature. So let's talk about the barometers of success. What is the best way? You've said, oh, it works really well in Boston. It's not working here. How well, do you I, I think Mayor Duffy and, and, and President Evans have kind of gone through the litany of, of different kinds of, of, of me academic measures you can have. And I, I don't think you can just rely on test scores. And I don't think you can rely on absolute scores. You've got to look at progress and if things are getting better. Um, you have to look at graduation rates, all the things you talked about. Um, I would add one other consideration if you're talking about governance. There are two questions. Is the system working? Are we educating kids? Which is the bottom line question, obviously. But if you're talking about governance, you're also talking about a system that is part of a democratic process, one way or the other. And you have to figure out a way to assess that also. And what we did in New York was very important, I think, when we had public hearings and we, we, had, we went out to communities. Um, we spent a year doing this just to get a sense of the people and how they thought it was working. And that's a different kind of consideration than, than the academic one, which is very important, obviously. If the kids are not learning, then the system is, is a failure. There's no doubt about that. But, um, if you're going to look at it in terms of evaluating a governance system, you have to raise those questions because what we're really, t you know, the school system is not a, it's not a corporation. It's part of the public decision-making process. It's paid for with public taxes. It, uh, there is an election process one way or another, whether you're electing a school board or a mayor. Um, and those considerations are very important if you're talking about governance. And I think the only way to get that is to go out and talk to people. It's not a quick study, but it's an important part of what we're talking about here. 
So to continue, uh, school districts that continue assessing public opinion through forums and other, uh, other venues during mayoral control, yeah. that's an important part. H have you considered that as part of um, this proposal at all? Uh, continual meetings and forums, ch how would you check it as you go along? Before the, the vote or, or post? If, if mayoral control were imposed. Oh, it, well, if it were, I would say imposed, I would say if it were voted in by the state legislature, uh, one of the things that we would do is we'd be going out to our customers continuously. We'd be surveying, uh, we'd be surveying parents, neighbors, taxpayers, getting feedback, trying to improve the system. And, and where we start from, if it happens, and where we end up at the end of the four or five year period, would be a focus on continuously in trying to improve the system. And one thing aside from what the doctor just mentioned, and I agree with everything he said, one criteria that we see in Rochester, we have lost 43% of our population since the 1960s. Uh, our tax base is shrinking. We have a city that primarily becomes either newlyweds or empty nesters. Uh, people make decisions to move out when their kids are going to school, by and large, uh, in, in large numbers. You can track our home sales. School systems are magnets. There are other school districts that become magnets for people coming in. And so that has to be become an attractor, and it can be. And, and urban districts face challenges suburban districts don't face. But I do believe we have lowered our expectations for decades. We can raise those. I think we can raise those expectations, raise hope, and also not only focus on education outcomes for kids and families, but also the economic fabric of this community. President Evans, I know that the school district uses attendance, graduation, uh, test scores, all those measures of success as well when assessing how well the current system is working. What about gathering public input in forum? Do you feel that there's enough of that going on? Uh, absolutely, and I, and I think that's what you have school board members for. Lord knows I hear from our citizens on a um, regular basis about a myriad of issues, as does um, the superintendent, and, that, and, and you can talk to anyone that, that are on suburban school boards, they will tell you the same thing. I, I think that that's one way in which the current system um, uh, uh, works well. You, you absolutely have to have, I have a separate line in which anyone can call me at any time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, in which they can leave a message. Um, and, and tell me of an issue that they may have. So I, I think that that is key um, in any system, but I, I think that's key in any elected body. The people who are there have to be responsive to the people who they um, represent. And that's one of the reasons why um, I think that as we have this discussion about mayoral control, more citizen input is um, so very important. Because um, as I said, we're, we're, we're here, but none of us are here forever. Um, there's not any elected official that's served for 100 years, I don't think so. So as, as we come and go, the public is constant, and it's important that we take their views into consideration. Dr. Vitteretti, typically how long does it take uh, for communities to discuss mayoral control before they decide to take, go that route or, or not go that route? And then once they've chosen mayoral control, how long do you need to wait to see if it's working? Well, the question may be how long do you have to wait before it gets to the legislature in New York <laughs> these days? <laughs> um, um, it varies. Uh, in, in Boston, they went on for years. There were several referenda. Um, it varies by the locale and by the, the, the form of decision making that's required. Um, and how, how do you know when it's working? I, <laughs> I think it takes a long time to really get a sense of that. I mean, I guess you can get a sense of it, again, depending on how you, what criteria you're using. If you're, if you're looking at, I mean, let me go back to my original, one of my early statements. I think one of the things that mayoral control does is it gives a capacity for change. You can start to get a sense of that, I think, within the first year when you see an agenda emerge. Um, and you could also get a sense of how people are responding to that, because change doesn't necessarily always mean change for the better. Um, but I, I think that stuff becomes apparent very early on, because when you have a mayor who takes charge, then the mayor is under a lot of pressure to do something. And so within the first year, there needs to be some kind of an agenda that's, that's kind of declared. It takes time to assess, how, I think, whether something is working. Um, especially if you're going to use the bottom line criteria of test scores and, you know, graduation rates and dropout rates and, you know, the usual stuff that you, you, you guys were talking about. Um, you don't wave a magic wand and say, well, we have this new system here and let's watch the scores move. It's, it's not going to happen that way. It's school systems 
don't change that quickly. I mean, they, to get a system in place and new leadership and new programs and to test them out. So I think it takes a while. I mean, uh, and, and what you're really talking about is two levels of decision making, whether you like it or not. And, and the first level of decision making is what, whether there's enough of a consensus at the local level to take this to Albany through your representatives is the first consideration. And then the second consideration is what happens over there, which <laughs> I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't venture to guess what's going to happen in Albany over the next year or so. Um, because things are kind of confused there for, for a number of reasons. Um, Let so me ask Samir, do you think hard. you've given this enough time? How much more time would you be willing to give it before taking it to Albany to take your chances? I think there would be some that would want me to take as much time as possible and, and stretch it out for many years, uh, but our kids can't wait. Uh, I want to give credit to people like Dave Gant and Joe Morelli again. Uh, Dave Gant's a dean of our assembly delegation. I don't think anybody could ever question Dave Gant's uh, commitment to the kids in his community, especially in some of our toughest neighborhoods. Uh, both he and his mother, I think, have been incredible stalwarts for, for people that have been affected by poverty. David will tell you he has never supported this change before. Now he does. Uh, Joe Morelli, the same thing. And, and this almost flies in the face of sometimes uh, the Democratic Party versus Republicans. Now, I, look, I went ahead and looked. The legislature voted twice for New York City. Uh, they voted uh, the first time and then when they renewed it. Our delegation, both sides of the aisle, all voted yes to support New York City's uh, efforts. And to go back to, to Dave Gant, who lives in our city, who represents our city, he has said time and time again that I want uh, what's best for my city and my kids. And I think that the, the rest of the legislature, as the doctor said, we don't know. But I believe that if this delegation has supported another city like New York, if New York has shown, as it has, results that I don't think can be refuted. It's the same data that Rochester uh, assesses as well. Why wouldn't our delegation or the legislature give Rochester kids the same chance that we all gave New York City's kids? Because as those graduation rates go up, as those dropout rates are cut in half, those are real lives. Those are kids who are not in jail, who are not in cemeteries, who are not out in the street, who hopefully are not uh, involved in that, that percentage of, of folks under, in, in poverty. And this, as a doctor knows, there is incredible courage it takes on behalf of elected officials in Albany. I mean, Ed Murbansky has said it publicly, he said it to me. He said, Bob, you may beat me in the Assembly, I will beat you in the Senate. There's no doubt every member of that delegation uh, across the state is being pressured every single day. And so you're looking to move this as quickly as possible. Quickly, but I also think, and, and I'll close on this, we're talking about political courage. And I would say for every elected official, you face decisions that you better be able to say, what is best for people to put me in the office versus my political career? And this is going to be a great test. And I, I'm, I'm confident people like Dave Gant and Joe Morelli are leading this. It's my expectation. The rest of the delegation across the state uh, will support it as well. President Evans, how much more time do you think needs to be spent on this issue before it is brought to the legislature? Uh, I mean, I'm sure, Dr. Vivere, you can attest to this. I'm sure in New York City there was robust dialogue. I just think that all of um, the stakeholders in the community should have a, a, a say so in this discussion. I don't think that we've had uh, nearly enough um, conversations uh, in, in the community about about mural control, and I think that's what people are are frustrated frustrated um, for. And you know, I'm I'm no um, um, career politician. The mayor, you're not, you're, the mayor is, is not one either. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it, it does not uh, matter to me in terms of in terms of political consideration. I, I, my point is that I think that the public should have the ultimate say in terms of um, in, ter in terms of uh, changing the system in such a drastic way. Okay, and okay. well, we we don't have too much time here, and I wanted to get one more question into you, Dr. Vitteridi. He's asking for a five-year test period. Is that a reasonable amount of time? Test period. After. After, it, it, once the mayoral control is adopted. I would say so. I, I would say that that would give you some sense of where things are moving and, um, and whether or not things are moving in the right direction. Um, I think you can, you'll have a consensus among the public on, on whether things are moving correctly. Okay, we have about a minute and a half, so I'm going to give you 45 seconds and you 45 seconds. So go ahead, Mayor. Well, I, 
In, in closing, I appreciate very much the chance to have this dialogue. I appreciate the good doctor coming here. Uh, and uh, in the end, we've had three decades of results that do not match what Rochester is capable of. Uh, we cannot keep going down the same path. Uh, it is about changing what we do, changing our style of governance. 46% uh, graduation rates, the investments that we do uh, make do not have a return. And I think it is time that this community step up, put all these reforms and talk and dialogue aside, and have the courage that, to set uh, an agenda for kids. And after five, I don't think five years of investment is too much to invest in our children. And we can evaluate then, but if we wait every day, month, year we wait, uh, there are lives that are being lost or diverted in this community. And this is the most important change that Rochester will ever face, the most important okay. change I've seen in my career. Let's uh, give President Evans 45 seconds. Uh, thank you, WXXI. Thank you, Dr. Viveretti. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Um, I, I, as I've stated all along, I believe that the public should have uh, more of a say-so and in, in the ultimate say-so in deciding this. And I think that the, um, that the jury is still out uh, as to whether or not mayoral control is effective and whether or not it will work in Rochester. I believe that it's no silver bullet. NAEP data, as I, as I mentioned earlier, tells us that, that it will not solve all of our problems. And I think it's important that we start talking about issues affecting the city as a whole, which find their way into um, city city classrooms on a daily basis. So I look forward to continuing continuing this discussion, and I hope that the public will continue to have more of a say-so um, in terms of deciding their future. Thank you. Okay, thank you. First, I want to thank you, Dr. Vitoretti, for thank coming in for and me. helping us out. And I'll see you again tomorrow night right here on <laughs> WXXI-TV on, at 8.30 on Need to Know. You'll be joining me. Also, thank you, Mayor Duffy and President Evans for spending time you know, going over this important subject. I really, really appreciated that. And also want to thank our journalists WXXI's Bob Smith, City Newspaper's Tim Macaluso, and Liz Medden from WDKX-FM. We hope this forum helped increase your understanding of mayoral control and what it might mean for this community. But as with any good discussion, there are bound to be some leftover questions. WXXI and its partners this evening, City Newspaper and WDKX-FM, invite you to keep sending us your thoughts and questions so we can take those into account during our continuing coverage of mayoral control. You can go to citynewspaper.com or wxxi.org and leave comments, or you can send an email to Wake Up Club at WDKX-FM. I'm WXXI News Director Julie Phillip, and this has been Point to Point, a forum on mayoral control of city schools. Have a great night.